This is a bunch of honey hole right here. It's got a bunch of different varieties of turnips and kale and forage rapes. And uh, basically I'm going to be mixing it with uh, this blend is just another blend that we got from last year, kind of left over. It's got a lot of, it's like 90% wheat and oats and a bunch, and about 10% brassicas. I'm even going to throw in some uh, dank and radish seeds like I do in a lot of our spots. But uh, basically what we're going to be planting today is just about right around a half acre of, uh, doesn't even look like we're going to be planting right now, but it's basically just a half acre of milkweed and grass, a little bit of goldenrod. So I'm gonna broadcast the seeds out there and then we're gonna spray it and I'm gonna crush it all down with the four-wheeler. And this is just the new method we kind of figured out and have learned about recently. We're trying it out this year in a few different spots. Uh, hopefully it works out good because if it does, it's a lot easier process. You don't have to worry about you know mowing or tilling or anything. You just seed and spray. So hopefully it works out. back at uh, the spraying seed plot failure and it's a failure because it did not the brass because it just didn't germinate and really grow that good at all in this thick sod mat so we came in here a couple days ago we burnt off the majority of it we left some of the areas on the edges just so we can kind of compare we're going to come in here with the disc today and disc it all up and replant it into brassicas it's been about an almost an entire month since we planted and the brassicas that did grow, they're nothing really. The beans are looking all right. We had some winter rye in here too, which is looking all right too, but for a month's worth of growth, this stuff just didn't do much of anything. So my dad's coming with the disc. We're gonna rip it all up and we're gonna replant. There is some brassicas that grew, but they're very, very sparse. And for a month's worth of growth, they really aren't that impressive. And another reason why we're redoing it all because there's all kinds of weeds coming in here. Thistles, all this grass coming back throughout the whole plot before we burned it all off. We're, we burned it off, we're disking it up, and we're going to plant. We left this side over here, kind of along the edge of the food plot, just as a good comparison. We do have some brassicas in here, some beans, but they're really sparse. The beans look fairly good, but the brassicas, man, there's nothing in here at all, really. All right, here's some. They're just really, really thin and small. planted everything it's only like a maybe a half acre if you include the area that we didn't disc up it's a really small little brassica food plot but anyways guys I'll get back to you when I get out here next time there should be some better results than the first planting um, 
it, it is nice that we left some of the first planting so we can kind of compare and see how good that does. Like I said before, the brassicas are very thin in there. There are some beans, but overall, this uh, disking method is probably gonna probably gonna do the job here. So I'll see you in about a week, maybe two weeks, whenever I'm out here next time. So see you then. All right, so I made it back out to this spot right here. This was our no-till or spray and seed failure. Um, we had to replant this by uh, burning off all the old dead sod and uh, disking it up, as you just saw earlier in this video. And I'm out here after, I'm not sure how long this is at after, but I'll put it up on the screen. It's looking really good. All right, so as you can tell, we got pretty good germination on the brassicas. Although there is uh, pretty much a layer of grass and just grass coming in throughout the whole plot. And not right here, but in some areas, the soybeans came in really good actually. You can see all these soybeans in here. These are all gonna stay green. I mean, well into October. They probably, these beans probably really won't produce any pods at all, but those are, they're gonna stay green long, long into the fall. And that's what I planted them for. But some of these areas, the brassicas are a little thick, but in other areas, like right here, it looks pretty good. You know, not too thick, but not too much grass coming in here either. And I'll show you this, right over here is an area that we didn't, you know, burn off and disc just to kind of see what it would turn into. And we probably should have did it because as you can tell, it just filled back in with grasses and stuff. There's a few brassicas and soybeans in here from the first planting, but they really aren't that impressive considering that they've been in the ground for over a month now, these brassicas over here. But there is some, you know, but not a whole lot. We got this little section here and then that whole other side over there is all, you know, I'll go over there and show you what that looks like too. Now I'm on the other side of the pot. I was just over there. Um, what I was saying is this edge, basically from here to here, was from the first planting. And the reason why I saved this is because this area looked pretty good. I mean, the beans were pretty big here and there was a lot of them. And everything's grown a little bit since I've been out here. There is brassicas in here, but like I said, this was like the best looking spot in this whole plot. That's why we left this little strip here. But this stuff has been in the ground for over a month now. And it's very sporadically thin in here. A lot of grass coming in, vines growing back. So that's why we had to replant. But the beans in here do look pretty good in some of these areas. But this stuff right over here, what we just replanted, we got excellent germination, probably too much actually. The only thing I can think of that I could really improve this food plot, I don't know if I'm gonna have time to do it this year, is to come in here with clethodum and spray out this grass because I really think this grass is gonna slow down these brassicas and kinda, you know, keep them from reaching their full potential. There's a lot of grass in here and if you came in with clethodum, You'd wipe all that out and it would just be a solid stand of brassicas and beans. It would be excellent, but like I said, I don't know if I'm going to have time for that. It wouldn't take that long. That's why I'm kind of considering it. I'll get back to you in another two weeks when this stuff gets a little bigger. I'm thinking I probably will spray it, but I would like to spray it, but I just don't know if I have time. Anyways, I'll get back to you in about two weeks, so I'll see you then. Well, here we are. This is the final update on this plot. Um, it's really looking good. I did come in here um, probably about a little over a week ago and sprayed it with clethodum. I said I might do that, well I did it, so if I wouldn't have done it there would have been a lot more grass out there, but uh, I killed off most of the younger grass and then right up here on the edge, like I was saying, this was the first initial no-till planting, this stuff. I killed some of it, but I think I just slowed down a lot of it because this stuff is a lot bigger. But. Uh, as you, as you can clearly see, this is the area that we replanted and worked up with the disc. And this is the original planting still right here. Lots of young soybeans in here. And a few brassicas. Right here's a purple top turnip. Um, we probably could have left the whole plot like this, but again, this side right here was kind of the better portion. The middle didn't really have as many brassica so that's why we left this side just to see what, what it would turn into if we would have left it we probably would have been fine but uh as you can tell the brassicas are really sparse in here but there is still a decent amount in here it's just there's a lot of grass that came in 
so. You can tell that clethrum did its job. It definitely uh, it didn't kill a lot of this grass, but it definitely slowed it down. I just used the, uh, the Rest Max, I believe, off of White Tail Institute's uh, products. But there was all kinds of grass in here with the brassicas in the last update. And you can kind of see, actually I can't really see much of any grass in here. I think it killed most of the grass and the brassicas just grew up. I did fertilize this too, the day I sprayed, so I fertilized this once with just generic 4600, bunch of nitrogen, and then I sprayed right after I fertilized, so man, this, this stuff really jumped, but the good thing is we got a heat wave right now, and this heat wave that's coming in is going to last probably for about a week, and it's like 80 degrees right now, really humid out, it feels like a summer day, it's kind of windy though. This, this should definitely help these uh, brassicas any later planted crops kind of mature, you know, get a little extra heat and humidity and all this moisture we're getting. So that'll help out everything. So as you can tell, the replanted area came in real thick. Some areas I did overseed it, but uh, most of it looks pretty good. But uh, we're, like I said, if we would have left uh, the whole plot like this, we probably would have had similar amounts of biomass because these plants are so much younger. I mean, plus they're pretty thick, so they're not going to get too much bigger, plus the growing season's about done. Whereas these ones on the edge here that are from the orig original planting, the few that did grow had plenty of time to mature, and they're really looking good. All these dank and radish, forage, rape, and um, purple top turnips in here. Right way back here in the corner, I just ran across a, a dank and radish that's been pulled out, probably by the deer. You can tell it's all nipped off and then this one right next to it has all a bunch of nipped off ends on the leaves that one's still in the ground but yeah I guarantee this is from the deer you can tell they munched right into it right there huh and this plot is a very similar to one of the spots they did at our house this side all the way up to right around here in the middle is all honey hole it has purple top turnips, um, a lot of forage rapes and stuff. We've been, we've been planting honey hole. This is the third year we've been planting honey hole. And then this spot over, or the middle over, is all uh, a new blend that I, we tried out this year. This side has uh, dank and radish, whereas this side, the honey hole doesn't. So this side has dank and radish, again, purple top turnips, some forage rapes and other types of turnips and rape. And... Uh, this is, uh, like I said, the Forge Feast, no, the Sweet Feast um, Brassica Blend from um, Northwoods Whitetails. So I tried out the, this Northwoods Whitetails blend here and at home in two different plots to see how well it turns out. I know they like the dank and radishes earlier in the season, whereas the honey hole doesn't have it, but you can always add in, you know, you can buy just straight dank and radish and add it in if you want, but it almost looks like the honey hole is doing better, but uh, Maybe it's just because I overseeded this side a little bit because I know this stuff had a lot of really small seeds and they were black. Whereas the honey hole seeds, you can, uh, you, they're red and you can see them easier. But yeah, I think I did overseed this side a little bit more. You can see kind of the yellow colorations throughout the plot and the brassicas there are really small. You come over this side, there's a few overseeded spots, but most of it looks pretty good like all of this right here. And it's darker green, 